There are plenty of bad television finales, endings that disappoint, miss the point, or sidestep answering any questions. So David Shore emailed Damon Lindelof and said, hey, do you want to get kicked in the balls by Olivia Wilde? Olivia was ad-libbing a bunch of jokes, too, to him. Or... This is for the ending of Lost. House has a decent finale, titled Everybody Dies. It wraps the series up in a bow, and it doesn't do anything too stupid. But if I'm trying to do anything as a critic, it's to differentiate between decent and exceptional. I'm satisfied with the series, and I'm satisfied with the ending. I think too much focus gets put on the ending. It's not about the ending, it's about all the individual moments throughout the course of the journey. I agree with David Shore. I don't define a series by its final episode. People can expect too much from an ending. However, endings are inherently important, because they communicate that everything after this moment is not worth seeing, and everything before this moment is. Generally speaking, episodic television has a safety net. There's no pressure to resolve hundreds of plot threads, adhere to a specific framework, or answer impossible questions. You could stop anywhere because it's designed to be self-contained. Is there a difference between case number 1 and case number 177? Not really. All you have to do is pick an arc that feels finite and call it a day. Seasonally, House's arcs look like this. Something dramatic happens at the end of a season. The beginning of the next season deals with the aftermath and the middle of the season plateaus until the next dramatic bump. Bump? Oh yeah. My grandfather died of a bump. Season 8 begins with House in jail, and it's pretty cool. <laughs> then, after the premiere, everything settles back into the formula. House is released on probation, he reassembles a team, and he solves cases until Wilson is diagnosed with cancer. An oncologist with cancer, of all the things that could be killing me. It's like the universe, give me the big middle finger. The series has constantly been give house challenges. That's standard dramatic structure. Place roadblocks in front of your protagonist. Put your protagonist into interesting and challenging situations. And we, in a way, took that to a higher level. Give his best friend cancer and see how he reacts. Um, if house is so smart, why doesn't he just cure cancer? Cure cancer. I'm surprised no one ever thought of that before. And why not cure death while he's at it? We're going to cure death? <laughs> Doubt it. But the point is that it's out of House's control. There is no puzzle. There is no clever diagnosis. There's nothing he can do. I'm not going to let you just die. The backbone of the show has always been House and Wilson's friendship. It starts with them, and it ends with them. Wilson is the only constant in House's life. House pushes people away, but he's always kept his one best friend. Maybe I don't want to push this till it breaks. And to me, they represent two important ideals. I want to be as smart as House and as kind as Wilson. Sometimes those things conflict, sometimes they go together perfectly. You can be a real jerk sometimes, you know that? Yeah, and you're the good guy. At least I try. As long as you're trying to be good, you can do whatever you want. And as long as you're not trying, you can say whatever you want. Yeah, so between us, we can do anything. We can rule the world. Let's face it, they belong together. Because you're a closet case? We're not, uh, together. He is so self-loathing. Why not? Why not date you? It's brilliant. We've known each other for years. We put up with all kinds of crap from each other, and we keep coming back. We're a couple. Gregory House, will you marry me? Wow. This is unexpected. So taking away the person House loves the most is crippling. So that's the great wisdom you're imparting? That I'll always be alone? There's only one person you can count on. Wilson has five months to live. As a sympathetic gesture, Foreman gives House a season pass to the New Jersey Devils, and the first game starts a little after Wilson is six feet under. House rejects that gesture and flushes the tickets as a prank. 
but he accidentally floods the restroom to such a degree that it caves in the ceiling and destroys an MRI. This amounts to felony vandalism. Now he has to serve the rest of his sentence, six months, missing Wilson's last days. In the finale, House meets a patient who loves heroin. The second it entered my veins, it was like God had taken over my body. It's like there's no more pain or unhappiness in my life or anybody else's. This resonates with House, who's got nothing to lose. So he disappears for two days, getting high. He wakes up in a warehouse that's on fire, and the patient has already overdosed. Don't bother. He's dead. You're dead too. House hallucinates a conversation with four people from his past, and they each argue the pros and cons of killing himself. Guess we figured out why you're seeing me, your suicidal friend. House decides to live, but the building blows up and oh no, House is dead! At the funeral, everyone gives their nicest two-second soundbite. He was a good son. Wilson starts to do the same, but he switches it up for a more honest approach. House was an ass. In the middle of his rant, he gets a text, and lo and behold, House is alive. I'm dead, Wilson. How do you want to spend your last five months? The secondary characters sign off with a heartfelt montage, and House and Wilson ride into the sunset, to the tune of Enjoy Yourself, It's Later Than You Think, by Louis Prima. Enjoy yourself, enjoy yourself, it's later than you think. Enjoy yourself. Don't be a fool. First and foremost, why aren't they playing the Rolling Stones? The show's unofficial anthem is you can't always get what you want. I want you to do your job. But as the philosopher Jagger once said, you can't always get what you want. House is obviously a fan of the band. The groupies sleep with the roadies in order to get to Mick. And your Mick. That was the metaphor I was making, yes. You think Jagger shows up for the sound check? And the song is used in the pilot, the season one finale, the season three premiere, covered by House in season five, and its master swan song in season seven, as well as being quoted in dialogue. You can't always get what you want. Well, you can't always get what you want. You can't always get what you want. What a perfect line to sum up everything. Wilson would start talking about regrets or things he's going to miss, and House would lovingly shut him down with, you can't always get what you want. Cue the music. I mean, come on. Apparently they considered it, but David Shore says, we're all about cutting against what people think we're going to do. So going with this weird, uplifting song about dying had a really nice feeling to it. <sighs> okay. Though, credit where credit is due, Enjoy Yourself was sung by Amber's Ghost in season five. Enjoy yourself while you're still in the pink. Gets you one point. One. Conceptually, the finale is great. In practice, there's a lot to be desired, mainly because it's the length of an average episode. The finale breezes through each moment about as quickly as my summary. How did House survive that explosion? He got out of the back of the building. Right, and how did he fake the forensics? The body just switched the dental records. Oh, of course, let's move on. Sherlock Holmes, Whee! I think some extra minutes could have ironed out some of the kinks. 
In total, the show has three two-part episodes. My Baby Doll, Broken, Euphoria, and the season four double feature, House's Head and Wilson's Heart. Everybody Dies is already divided like these two episodes. Part one is a metaphysical mystery, House's Head. We jump in and out of time and reality to figure out how he got here. The hallucination is your messed up brain's way of reasoning out a problem. And part two is the emotional fallout, Wilson's heart. Wake her up to tell her that she's, that she's. You are waking her up so that you can both say goodbye to each other. She would want it. I think it's time to go to sleep. Just a little longer. We are always gonna want just a little longer. Except the finale's emotional fallout gets about 10 minutes because it's one episode. I know heart and head start with the same three letters, but you gotta read all the way to the end. So that means 10 minutes for House's decision to live, his death, confirming his death. He's really dead, guys. Corner confirms it's him. His funeral, a reunion with our cast, past and present, not you. His resurrection, explaining his resurrection, a montage of goodbyes and any implications about the future. When the cancer starts getting really bad, cancer's boring. You know what I feel right now? I don't feel miserable or angry. I don't feel good or bad. I feel nothing. It's hard for me to get swept up by the emotional last ride when I have so many dangling questions. How is House going to access money as a dead man? How is he going to get Vicodin prescriptions as a dead man? And he's a world-renowned doctor. Newsweek's calling it. Somebody's going to recognize him. You're Dr. House, aren't you? Dr. House? He'll be back in the morning. I read in the paper you're treating a police officer. Don't you have some famous diagnostics guy? What's he doing? Being around House, he's such a legend. He's so intimidating. I checked you out. You were a pretty big deal. He was in a documentary. The charming House, who happens to be a film buff with a soft spot in his heart for children, told us how he got his start. See, I became a doctor because of the movie Patch Adams. Determined to save the boy's life. He was the subject of a famous performance artist. I have a title for your piece. It doesn't mean anything. He worked with the CIA. Dr. Samir Terzi, it's a pleasure to meet you, Dr. House. We really appreciate the consult on such short notice. There's nothing that gives me more pleasure than helping out a colleague. You're destroying your entire life. You can't go back from this. You'll go to jail for years. You can never be a doctor again. I'm dead, Wilson. How do you want to spend your last five months? The point of the finale is to think a little less and appreciate what you have. And I relate to that. I mean, it might not be clear by the six-part analysis, but, you know, in theory, I relate to that. But that philosophy is only really applicable to everyday life. You can't really say don't sweat the small stuff when you faked your death and you're a fugitive on the run. Now is not the time for Hakuna Matata, don't worry about it. You wanna come in, smoke a little weed, watch some MTV? Apparently, nothing matters unless it's supposed to. Like bombshells, I resist how staged everything is. 
Isn't it convenient that Wilson gets cancer? Isn't it convenient that House has to go back to jail at the same time? Especially over something so lame. TV characters, especially eccentric ones like House, don't abide by the rules. They can get away with murder because they're not real. In fact, some of them do get away with murder. If they were real people, they'd get arrested all the time. I'm, I'm sure it's a mistake. I'll call you as soon as I know what's going on. Since the beginning, House has lathered himself in consequence-free immunity, despite plenty of illegal activities. Just to name a few, forging prescriptions, assault, and insider trading. I just made a $10,000 short sale on a stock I know is going to crash because of what I saw a grief-stricken dad doing his son's deathbed. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. Which he does again in the last season to get funding back for his department. Criminal charges do not apply to House. He shoots a corpse and destroys an MRI for a diagnostic test. And his punishment is a disapproving look. My bad. Now, because it's convenient, he's going to jail for the same level of property damage. Yes, he's on probation, but I can think of seven alternatives provided by the show that aren't as pathetic. Reason one, a common condition of parole is having a steady job. In fact, this is Foreman's only condition for springing house. You're out tonight on conditional parole, the condition being that you're employed by me. So if House got fired for any of his typical mischief, he'd have to go back to jail. Reason two. For the first third of season eight, House is forced to wear an ankle monitor. He can only go to work or home, and if he doesn't, the consequence is clear. But what happens when the stunt doesn't work? I think you're gonna have to pay off a bet, then we're gonna triple your clinic hours. I'm gonna call your PO, and you're gonna go back to jail. But the subplot is mostly used as an opportunity for comedy. This is where you dazzle me with your contingency plan. Except in one episode, House obsesses over a cold case, and he comes up with ways to trick the monitor in order to investigate. Hey, did you know your ex-wife still lives right behind this place? And I really like that idea because it plays into House's character. It's a genetic condition. Shut up! Genetic! He's not gonna put himself back in jail over a dead kid. He's an addict, and he will put himself back in jail over a puzzle. So instead of removing the ankle monitor early and eliminating any dramatic tension, let's say Wilson gets cancer and he wants to travel or do basic local things. Go out to eat, go to a boxing match, whatever it may be. House would have to convince his parole officer to take off the monitor. But when he discovers a cold case, it triggers his obsession, so he violates his parole. Bad news for Wilson. Reason three. Wilson is determined to go on a road trip, and he makes House come with him, whether he wants to or not. Yes, that's why I brought this. 20 cc's of propofol. You can accompany me willingly, or I will, when you least expect it, inject the contents of this vial into your bloodstream. There's just a minor problem of crossing state lines without permission. I'm still on probation. Leaving the state without permission will really P.O. my P.O. It doesn't matter. So this option is more of a gamble. Just because he leaves the state doesn't mean he'll get caught. So House has to risk his freedom for his friend, which would send him to jail. <laughs> Reason four. I'm not sure if you're allowed to stockpile chemotherapy drugs and administer them at home, but that's what House and Wilson do in the C word. I just want you to know then I appreciate the risk you're taking. Pumping a human being full of lethal chemicals in your living room. If I die, it probably won't go over well with your probation officer. Wilson can't die because that would ruin the plot, but if something went wrong, it could highlight some kind of illegal activity. And thematically, it's the best connection between jail and cancer. Reason five, marriage fraud. Her specialty. I made oh. up this pun. 
I don't like this option, but since the show brings it up, it's worth mentioning. House and Dominica are legally married, but they have to prove they've been domestic so she can become a U.S. citizen. You're an ex-con. If you get caught perjuring yourself to Homeland Security, you'll end up back in jail. And that would be troubling if there was the slightest chance that we'd get caught. You barely know each other. You've got about five minutes to remake yourselves into a convincing married couple. And why? Dominica gets a green card. What's in this for you? This is what men do for the women they pretend to love. Also, she's paying me 30,000 bucks once we pass. At best, this plot is cute. Oh, big hug, big man. It's cold out here. At worst, it's as random and bizarre as it sounds. They barely pass the test, but they actually start to like each other for real. Is, is the idea of demons so different than the Higgs boson? We can't see it, but we can see the impact of its presence. I borrowed your physics book. And because of that, House hides her immigration approval to keep her with him. The Art of Seduction by Dr. Love. When Dominica finds out, she leaves, but still manages to reminisce fondly at the funeral. I couldn't help but love him. At the very least, this option would be set up, and it would contribute something to House's character, which is what the finale is trying to do. You're married. Cuddy's gone. We aren't the only two people who could love you. If he was supposed to go to jail for a fake marriage, it would show that he's unable to make meaningful relationships, and he winds up hurting himself and others. You could even make a symbolic comparison by saying that dysfunctional love sent him to jail the first time, and it's going to send him back. I'm sorry. You said you had seven reasons. I pulled the number out of the air. What, five isn't enough? Five lame reasons aren't. Reason six. Getting some mech to be. Coming through. Good product pulse. Regular? No. Got a PVC. Gotta move it, people. Halfway through season eight, Chase gets stabbed by a patient, and a hearing takes place to decide who's at fault. If House is at fault, he goes back to jail. And if he's suspended as a result of this hearing, he violates his parole and he goes back. It's a particularly heavy episode that puts House's methods on trial. Do the ends justify the means? My process is proven. Good things usually happen, bad things sometimes happen. So, two birds with one stone. If you move this arc to the end of the season, House would be distracted by Wilson's cancer, causing Chase to overstep his medical authority, which leads to the stabbing. And a hearing would be a fantastic way to sum up House's practices as a doctor, and send him back to jail. It's like one long preamble that comes through character and motivations before the metaphysical smack trip. Reason 7. In the penultimate episode, House treats a patient who tries to kill himself. House goes way too far and strangles the patient to prove a point, that it's a basic instinct to stay alive. And um, I'm pretty sure that's assault. So why is that not the reason he's going back to jail? It also has the added irony that House might kill himself in the finale. Life is pain! I wake up every morning I'm in pain. I go to work in pain. You know how many times I wanted to just give up? How many times I've thought about ending it? Instead, they went with the tickets and the toilet method, which means what? You wanted to replace Wilson? I prank Wilson all the time. Enjoy. When I talked about the alternatives, you probably noticed a pattern. Every time House does something illegal, the threat of arrest is waved away because that's the conceit of the show. So... You know, don't send out the Marines. I should be back on the road in a few minutes. You can't give me seven parole violations, then expect me to take the last one seriously. Especially because it doesn't mean anything. 
it was a prank that went wrong. It's just a plot device to get us here. House's ghosts have to answer the ultimate question. If life sucks, then why live? Kuttner digs into the existential. Nothing matters, so when life hits a brick wall, then what's the point? Death's not interesting. You exist for what's interesting. Puzzles, ideas, analysis. Death is the opposite of a cool puzzle. It's eternal nothingness. But you don't find life interesting anymore. House has always been able to tread water. Miserable, sure, but he has freedom, a job, and loved ones. It's why he's typically against suicide. It's okay. You should be upset. He thought like you, pushed boundaries like you, he thought like me. You've known that living in misery sucks marginally less than dying in it. But now he's losing everything worth living for, so maybe it's just a simple calculation. I'm going to jail. Losing my job, losing my best friend. I need more. You think that's the sum total of who you are? Amber endorses subjectivity. He's happy. He's dead. It's like nothing matters, but with a positive spin. House can create whatever meaning he wants, but only if he's alive. When you solve a puzzle, the world makes sense and everything feels right. And you'll always have another one because people always get sick. It's shallow and it's insignificant, but if you don't give a damn if idiots live, why would you possibly give a damn about shallowness? It makes you happy. And that's been House's position all along. Darkness passes, so life is all you ever have. Everything sucks. Might as well find something to smile about. The goal in life is not to eliminate misery, it's to keep misery to the minimum. Oh, that's inspiring. I'm pissed because I'm dying. It's not fair. And I need... I need a friend. I need to know that you're there. I need... I need you to tell me that my life was worthwhile and I... I need you to tell me that you love me. <sighs> Stacy advocates for life's possibilities. God, love, children, any avenue unexplored. Don't be logical, be desperate. You gotta have something to hold on to. You can't live your life based on something you don't believe. But you can end your life based on something you don't believe? But these concepts actually do more damage. They remind House that he's failed to meet conventional expectations, and he feels discouraged. Imagining a better version of your life is not as inspirational as it sounds. It's the other problem with metaphors. Yes, what if you're actually in an ice cream truck, and outside are candy and flowers and virgins? You're on a plane! We're all on planes. Life is dangerous and complicated, and it's a long way down. And Cameron argues that Hal should give up as mercy. I think you've suffered enough. You've given enough. Living has never been easy for House. It's always been an uphill battle, and how long is that supposed to last? I know pain. You think you can handle it, and one day you can't. When that happens, you either find reasons to go on or you don't. So House considers all of these heavy questions, and he has to find a personal reason to live in the face of his obstacles. And here's where everything unravels. There is no reason. Not really. You are too cowardly to even admit you're taking the cowardly way out. He just decides to live with a cliched catch-all phrase. You're right, but I can change. What? Why? 
It's like he was in the middle of doing his taxes and thought, I don't have to do this if I kill myself. And then, you know, came to his senses. He's in a burning warehouse high on heroin. What part of himself is he going to change? Was change even the issue? And if it's oh so easy, why didn't he do it before he got here? And I get it. There's no way they could end the series with House killing himself. It's too dark. Harsh took, dude. So there has to be something optimistic. But if we're chasing optimism, then I prefer the episode that earned it. So the end sucks. It doesn't mean the beginning has to. Everything ends. Life ends. It doesn't mean that we can't enjoy it. And now I can finally come back to Broken. Welcome to the end of the thought process. See, the finale asks us, can you choose to be happy? Broken asks us, when bad things happen, how are you supposed to handle it? In part one, I talked about what it took for House to trust the system. You're scamming again. You can tell me. I'm not scamming, Albie. They broke you. They didn't break me. I am broken. He starts taking antidepressants, opening up, but what does he have to do to leave? What's the lesson, if you want to call it that? I want you to trust people. Throughout the episode, a visitor named Lydia plays piano to her sister-in-law, Annie. See her head? It bobs to the music. It's the only real reaction I'm getting from her. Feels like we were talking. Annie used to be a professional cellist, but started pulling away from everyone until reaching a catatonic state. So playing music is a pretext for House and Lydia to get to know each other, perhaps as more than friends. Good night. I love that Lydia implicitly trusts House. She has no reason to. She doesn't even know him. Why are you so nice to me? I think you have a good heart. But that's the beauty. Neither of them are hampered by each other's past. It's all about the present. Two people who like each other's company. Even if one of them is married and the other is a patient. How'd it go with Lydia? I found out she can only be happy so long before the catatonic guy with the two broken limbs rolls up the elevator. Philosophically speaking. House wants to get better, but he feels responsible for what happened to Freedom Master. No! Why do you value your failures more than your successes? My mother caught me masturbating. With pictures of her mother. Can we get past these cute deflections? Successes only last until someone screws them up. Failures are forever. As a doctor, House is well aware of the lasting impacts of failure. That's the difference between him and me. He thinks you do your job, and what will be will be. I think that what I do and what you do matters. But he kicks himself in the teeth too much. It's one thing to learn from your mistakes, but it's another thing to be immobilized by guilt. Mistakes happen, and sometimes there's nothing you can do. So you accept that fact? You accept that there's nothing you can do? Okay, I accept the fact that there's nothing I can do. Now, what can I do? You acknowledge failure, and you move past it. You apologize. House tries to apologize to Freedom Master, but then he hatches a way to fix him. Here's the logic. Freedom Master wants to save people, and he was convinced that a music box would wake up Annie. After his accident, he's appropriately as catatonic as she is. So House is convinced that the music box will wake him up too. If you thought you could cure Silent Girl with this, it's by your own rationale, she cure you. But it doesn't work, which isn't even the point. You're trying to fix instead of moving on. I think it's easier for House to try to solve a problem than expend any emotional energy. It's a way to protect himself. That's why he tries to back out of his affair with Lydia. He's avoiding vulnerability. All I know is I was happy five minutes ago. And now I'm not. How's it better? 
by Lydia. Fixing is mechanical. It means no harm, no foul. But acknowledging your effect on someone else's pain means accepting failure. It's hard to do. Sorry I pushed you away. It's what I do when I'm afraid. And as the episode presents it, House gets rewarded for it. When he apologizes to Lydia, they hook up. It's all very emotional. And later, he apologizes to Freedom Master. I was trying to prove a point. I was trying to be right. I ended up putting you in a dangerous situation, and I was not equipped to handle it. And you got hurt, and it's my fault. And I'm sorry. House honestly accepts his failure. There's nothing else he can do. But in doing so, he happens to solve the problem. Freedom Master wakes up and passes the music box to Annie. Then she wakes up. On the surface, this moment contradicts the lesson. It's why this episode is sugary sweet. Mental illness doesn't magically go away because you connect the dots or humble yourself. Today we're here to congratulate Annie! We're proud of her, we wish her well, and we hope to never see her again! <laughs> but this miracle is only partially in House's favor. Since Annie woke up, that means Lydia and her husband can move out of state. We've been wanting to move for years, but we've been tethered here. No, we're not. I don't want you to go. I don't want to go. His gift only ends up hurting himself. Got a surprise. And that's the point. The point of Broken, the point of the series, the point of life itself. Bad things happen. How are you supposed to handle it? Look, two things just happened. You got hurt, which means you connected to someone else strongly enough to miss them. And more important, you recognized the pain and came to talk to me instead of hiding from it in a Vicodin bottle. Broken's message isn't a recipe for happiness, but it encourages us to find ways to cope with our problems, ways that aren't self-destructive. I think that's a relevant discussion. I'm fine. I'm just not happy. I didn't let you out because you were happy. I let you out because I believe you had the skills to cope with that. Things are going to be annoying and downright hard sometimes. Love will never make sense, and happiness will always be slightly out of reach. But reality can still be worth it. And that includes entertainment. My favorite TV show can be bloated and inconsistent, but I can still take the good with the bad. So, no, you can't always get what you want, but if you try sometimes, you get what you need. Today we're here to congratulate Greg. We're proud of him, we wish him well, and we hope to, to never, never see him again.